Welcome to Swift Coaches Academy, a podcast dedicated to bringing health and wellness professionals the uncensored truth behind what it really takes to succeed in the health industry with me, your host, Zenia Wood. As an accredited exercise physiologist and business owner for almost a decade, I'm on a mission to transform the lives of ambitious health professionals like you who want more and are ready to take action to create incredible impact in your careers and unlock financial freedom in your business. So join me as I speak candidly with industry leaders about the struggles and successes from within the trenches through thought-provoking conversations. Today, Xenia speaks to her biz and education mentee, Alain Lloyd, from With Purpose Health and Fitness. From working a few hours in a group studio for someone else without even having an ABN to building her dream gym and recovery facility, Alan proves that anyone with the desire to learn and a willingness to put in the hard work can build a successful business. They go into detail on the most powerful tools, systems, and support that helped her get there. If you have, or one day want, a thriving health business, this episode proves it's closer than you realize when you take action today. Lan, how are you? Hey, Dan, I'm good. How are you going today? I am pretty good. This is round two for us, some technical <laughs> difficulties. So uh, fingers crossed that this time we uh, get it right from the start. Um, Lan is my one of my business mentees, has gone through our educational mentorship program and well before that was an OG client of Swift Movement Academy with me for your exercise and your rehab got a um a degree in exercise science way back in the day and um then decided that you you wanted to jump into this wild ride called business so today what I want to have a chat to you about is hopefully give some insights into you know what it's what it's like to be inside uh the business mentorship what lessons have been learned maybe the hesitations and sort of where you came from because um unlike most you actually didn't even have a business uh when we started which I think is is cool because we get to start from a fresh slate so why don't we you talk uh start talking about where you were before deciding to jump into the mentorship Mm -hmm, definitely yeah it feels like a lifetime ago now to be honest so before I jumped in on the business mentorship I was working part-time just a a few hours a week at one of the local gyms run some of the classes so um that was filling my cup somewhat but I always knew that there was more that I needed to do and I kind of just felt like I couldn't do what I wanted to do there. So if I couldn't do that and I couldn't make anything else work, I needed to just start my own and figure out a way to make that work. And I guess for me, I had, well, my kids are a little bit older now, but they're both at school now. So the thought for me was making sure that I had my business up and established by the time they were both at school. So I wasn't then trying to start this new chapter of my life then like I needed to start putting things into place and starting to work on that journey before I got to them both at school and go okay who am I what do I actually want to do what's my purpose in life so that's where I was when I started the business uh, business mentorship with you and it's um, probably quite uh, fitting that the business is called With Purpose, <laughs> yes. uh, considering that finding a purpose is, has been a journey for you and obviously the thing that you're super passionate about and, you know, branching out into mindset and recovery, not just personal training. It's It's been a wild ride. So let's back up a little bit because you started off in uh, the garage or the little shed that you had and now we've got like a proper facility that's, you know, still on your block at at your property, but it's a full warehouse. It's double the size you were mentioning before. Um, Why don't we talk about, so, okay, you were doing a couple of hours a week for another studio and then transitioning to work for yourself, fears, doubts, what was going through your mind when you were like, okay, I'm I'm really going to do this? 
I think initially you're kind of like naively optimistic. Like, you know, it's going to work out. You just have no idea how and you don't know who to go to because there's, I feel like we're just saturated with so much information now. It's really difficult to know who to trust because everyone wants to take take some money but the people like you that actually will give the value back for what you invest is what you're trying to find but because I already knew you through doing coaching anyway I was like that was a no-brainer we just just add this element in as well so I just really had no idea about the business side of things I know I was capable coach and I knew that I had the passion and that's what I wanted to do I just didn't know how I was going to actually make it work. All the, all the little nitty gritty things essentially to get the business up and running. And that's probably a pretty good topic to touch on. When you talk about the nitty gritty things, what were some of the things that transitioned you from, okay, I'm going to try this thing into like, let's actually make it a business and not just like, you know, a side hobby. Were there certain things that you were like, oh, you know, doing this or putting that in place? What were some of those things for you? So I think making sure that you, one, keep yourself out of, out of jail and make sure you've got all of the insurances, all of your liability, all of the things that are important. But if you don't know about them, you don't know about them. So having systems in place, so starting to you have a client booking system and how clients are managed and everything like that, a software for training programs, all of the things that you could do in an Excel spreadsheet or just messaging, but oh my God, it would take up so much time. So trying to find systems that work for you and where your main focuses need to be. So identifying how much you're spending, how much is coming out of the account to make sure that there is money in the account and then knuckling down and trying to find the systems that work for you and scaling them. So your your business systems are obviously different to mine because mine's on a much smaller scale, but still applicable. So trying to find those elements and just getting used to running with them and applying them, I think. Mm, absolutely. And I know, you know, things like um, direct debit systems and and having, um, you know, agreements in place and making sure everyone just knows what the process is, what they're, you know, joining in for and um, all of those things like the automated text reminders where we can look more professional, I think um, goes a really long way. And yes, you absolutely can, like you said, start with the Google Sheets version And I wonder how much time it would take someone to then transition that when they have 30, 40, 50 clients rather than like, let's start from day one and realize that maybe, hey, I do want to charge an extra $10, $20 a week because of the fact that I'm creating a system and it's easier for me and it's easier for the client and it looks more professional. Um, So I think that that's, you hit the nail on the head there with some, some pretty important systems and scaling doesn't have to just be scaling, you know, like I'm full capacity. It can be, how can I get more of my time back? Because we know that time's huge for you being a mom and being very strong and clear with your boundaries as to, you know, what you want this business to be for you and still be able to make it your passion and be profitable at the same time, I think is really cool. Um, Talk to me about, so we very quickly went from working for someone else to your little garage to now we've got a slab down on your property, full blown warehouse, gym style recovery center. Um, When going from the one-on-ones to the semi-private because you're at capacity, Mm -hmm. what sort of, um, what sort of things were going through your head, any fears or doubts? And then, you know, what sort of, um, helped you take the leap. Mm-hmm. So as we discussed, I hadn't actually start my started my business when I started the business mentorship. So I was already getting the weekly support and advice to then figure out once you do once you are at capacity of one on ones and you're not willing to give you're at your time capacity what do you do? So being able to scale and go to semi-privates is once you know, it's a no-brainer. But before you know that, you don't know any different. So trading the one-on-one for time is a little bit different. But I guess for me, um, being, I guess, just unsure why people would choose to come and see me in a semi-private 
capacity compared to going to somewhere else. So what makes me different? And that's, I think that was being a little bit naive again, a little bit unsure, starting out and trying to think, oh gosh, okay, I like I know I can do this, but getting that validation from your, your clients, which I was just saying before, we're, we're now at capacity for both of those semi-privates and it's really rewarding to think, oh, they yes, people coming here and people enjoy it and people stay and they get results. So it's just when you haven't done something, you need that little hand, I guess, to support you to be like, it's okay, you can take these next two steps because you've already done that. So you know the path. So for someone doing it for the first time, it feels scary and unknown. But then once you've done it, you look back and go, oh, it actually wasn't that big of a deal, even though you think it was at the time. Yeah. And I know that we mentioned before as well, um, off air that, uh, in our mentoring, we've talked about the fact that I remember, I think it was recently you were like, holy hell, I would definitely not charge what I used to charge back in the start when I was doing my semi-privates. Now it's like, is it double the price or something like that? It's close to, yeah. It's, um, it's very interesting what you think you're worth potentially initially. And then once you have got some runs on the board, so to speak, and people are coming and enjoy it, you go, oh my gosh, that like, how, how did I even do that? Like, it's not even possible. So it's, it's really rewarding to have that feeling. And what was it that gave you the confidence to increase your prices? Because I know that that's a big thing that a lot of people um, and especially coaches in the industry struggle with because they're, you know, we, we are in the industry to help people. And so sometimes it can feel a little bit um, challenging to also charge for something where we're like, Oh, I'd do it for free. But then obviously we want to make sure that this can be something that's our livelihood too. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it is tricky. And I think for me and what you, what we value sometimes is a little bit different to what other people value. But if they're looking for a quality product and you see it as valuable, like me investing in being in the business mentorship and doing the educational med- mentorship and having you as my as my coach, as an ex-phys coach, all of those things, I saw value. So I'm willing to pay that value to have it returned so that's how I started to shift my focus of I know what I can do and I know I can help you if you like I'm giving you something valuable and what you can give me in return is a fair a fair payment of time and a monetary amount so it that's what kind of turned me around from exactly what you said I would do all of this for free if I could if money wasn't an issue to hang on yes I'm I'm adding value so they're they're in return giving something that's of value up to them Mm. and so when you had those conversations of of increasing prices um what were the kinds of things that your clients turned around and said to you? Were they like, oh, absolutely? Or did you have anyone who was nervous about it? How did you navigate that? No, no one was like, no. <laughs> they, I, if anything, like initially they were like, oh, that's that's reasonably priced. So, yeah, which makes you go, oh, maybe I am worth more than I first think. So, no, I never had anyone go, oh, that's far too expensive. I can't afford that. And even new clients coming on, if there there was financial restrictions, we would find out an option that worked for them. So if they really wanted to work with me, we would scale down the offer and work out for what, what I could provide to them so they could get some value. So it was just probably just in my head and making sure that when I do present the offer that I'm presenting it with confidence. So I'm not like, oh, and uh, it's going to be this much money and then brush over it. It's this is what my price is this is what I'm putting on on offer. And if that works for you, great. If it doesn't, let's see what else we can do or go from there. I really love that. And I love, um, I know we've spoken about this a lot. I love, it's not devaluing your service. It's creating opportunities and saying, hey, look, I'm not going to reduce my price, but what I can do is something you know, that is less um, touch points or something that still, you can still work with me in a different capacity. Um, I love that because- then everyone else who's in the program isn't, you know, you do a little sneaky discount for someone on the side and then other people, if they were to find out, it's like, okay, well, that's also not fair in the inverse to have one person Mm -hmm. on a discount and everyone else not. And I think sometimes, you know, 
we think about sales or discounts as like, you know, but we really want to help people who want to get them in. But it's like, you've got to remember your clients as a whole are going to, um, you know, want to feel like it's fair across the board and also make sure that the value is there for everyone. Yeah, it's true. It's a balancing act and you you just try to use both your head and your gut, I think, to make those best decisions and figure out what works for everyone. I love it. Um, so we've gone from full capacity one-on-ones in the little shed to Mm -hmm. semi-privates to now a bigger facility. Mm -hmm. Semi-privates are full again. And we've got this sneaky little recovery center, which is going to blow up in Gympie. Um, I, I'd love to talk a little bit about, um, you know, obviously that's an additional income stream, which is something we talk about in terms of diversifying and making sure your eggs aren't all in one basket. But I'd love to talk about for you, um, you know, what made you decide to add that as your particular um, additional service or, or whatnot? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess like my approach is you can have your training down pat, but if you don't manage your stress, you don't have your mindset kind of uh, in constantly improving all of those things. If you don't have everything trying to work together, it's you're not going to get that progress and that forward momentum that you want. So recovery, ice bathing, heat therapy, breath work is all things that I'm super passionate about as well. And I'm like, what? Like we already have some breath work components in what we do. We do it before we do our cardio. Sometimes we do it on a day where everyone is absolutely buggered. And I'm like, okay, we're laying down, we're doing some breath work so we can get through. So I think for me, it was kind of a no brainer that that's once again, something that I'm passionate about and that I can integrate and the people that are coming to train with me, they also want to recover and they also want to work on their breath work and all of these things intertwine together. So that seemed like a really great choice to integrate as the next step on what we have to offer so that those people that are training can combine that together. Seems and- like seems like a, the <laughs> next logical step. I love it. And also, I think the thing that's great about that is that you've found your market and you figured out who you want to work with. And then instead of creating like a whole new market and working with a different demographic or psychographic in terms of pain points, you've Mm -hmm. picked the same people, but you've gone, what else do they need? Where else are they spending their money and their time and their energy? And could I service them in some of those other areas as well that are complementary to what I'm already doing, which is a very smart move, very smart woman you are. And I learned it from you. (laughs) No, it makes makes sense. If you find your people, your people usually have similar pain points, similar ideas of what they are willing to put their focus and their finances towards as well. So like you said, I was going to offer a different thing to different, a different demographic. And then you're like, hold on, Lan. Like, just take a step back and and see what you've already got and see what other areas they may be lacking in that you can help them with that you have speciality in. And the cool thing about this recovery stuff now as well is uh, that we've talked a lot about, um, you know, you went through the grow program level one in business and and then being in scale, we're talking about scaling. And so Mm -hmm. um, the big thing there being to add more people doesn't add more time because we know that time is our most precious asset, and especially for you as a mom. Um, So what are the things that you've started to implement or even think about in terms of launching this recovery thing and not just making it, oh, here's an ice bath, but, but creating more of like a program out of that. What are the things that you're working on at the moment to scale? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so initially, I want to obviously offer it as a complementary service to the training that people are doing. So if you're already training with me, that's going to become part of your package that if you would like it. So incorporating doing that recovery and the breath work and the hot and cold exposure, you can choose to have 
that as your option or then just try it by itself okay so I've already the people are already in my ecosystem it's not like I'm trying to recruit new people I've got them in there we're just modifying what we've already got and adjusting the payments to include both of them as one so yeah so just to clarify it's not yep. complimentary in the sense of it's free it's complimentary yep. as in it's it complements Trend. Yes, or in addition, yes. So you can have uh, choose whether you want to intertwine it in, or if you wanted to do like a casual pass kind of thing. So that's that's why I was trying to integrate it together um, and use, as we said, trying to not increase the amount of extra time that I am investing in that by making it as efficient as I possibly can. Re bookings, payments, what's included, the process, so it is as streamlined as we possibly can. But we can add value to people that don't have access to these things at home. I love it, and we've also talked about. I know mindset, breath work, a huge, huge passion projects of yours, and we've mm-hmm. talked about making those scalable as well. What are the certain things that have really stuck with you that you're um, taking action on at the moment to uh, launch some sort of mindset or or breath work mm-hmm. scaled products? Yeah, so this is really exciting. I'm actually really excited about this. So we're going to be very soon launching uh, Mum's Mindset Masterclass. So that's going to be for all of those mums that are, let's be honest, on Struggle Street and they feel like every day is a bushfire and they're not in control of anything. So we're trying to bring together a group of people that don't necessarily have to be in the same town. So by scaling it and making it available online, we can have a communication via a Zoom where we can all see each other at the same time each week, have a chat about what's going on, have a mindset topic and actual application points. So you can practice those things that week. And then if it's useful, you add that little tool in your toolkit so then those bushfires start to become controlled burns so by scaling that and rather than me just doing a one-on-one with someone on a mindset we can incorporate like that can be worldwide that you don't have to be located locally to participate in that which is amazing it's so cool. And I love that you've niched down into mums and being a mum yourself, you obviously go through this. And the cool thing that I think we we spoke about it, you know, there's always um, some sort of level of fear or uncertainty or doubt around, you know, am I qualified to do this? Or, you know, the, just the, the nervousness around starting something new. Um, and when we sort of talk about the mums, you obviously like lit up and um, that was, that was a really great um, time when I, I feel like we, we really figured out that that was the market that you love to service and you also know a lot about and you could talk underwater about the mindset and breathwork stuff. So um, I think, you know, the other cool thing of you creating journals for this and making it a little bit more, you have something physical, even if you're not physically present. There's so many different opportunities that we have at our fingertips with the touch of a couple buttons these days. And, um, you know, even if you were to charge like $40 a week for mindset and a journal, and I know, you, you know, you're creating other scalable things in there, like workbook activities, right? You create it once and everyone gets the same thing. And it's worth much more to each individual than the time and effort that it actually costs you to create with all the juicy goodness in your brain when it comes to mindset and recovery. So that's really cool. Yeah, it's super exciting. And as you've you've said many a times, like usually the people that you are mentoring, they're usually a few a few years behind you. So that was me a few years ago, like really struggling with everything. Same as why I'm being mentored by you. That like you started somewhere as well. So with the mindset, you want like it's once again, where you see the value, if you can then get up in the morning and actually enjoy spending some of the time with your kids before they go to school or less time being bamboozled and feeling like a mummy, that's what you're trying to achieve. So if that's that's the niche that I can serve, that's like I'm not a perfect mum or a perfect mindset person, but I continue to learn about it and continue to, continue to try to learn and apply things um, and strategies that have worked. So it's 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 just all where you are in your life, I guess. And I love that you're vulnerable and open with it. And, you know, any mum who's like, I've got everything figured out is obviously um, living in la-la land. 
Um, (laughs) because everyone struggles and you know even as business owners like some days I'm like what the fuck am I doing like I have no idea who who gave me permission to run a business (laughs) I'm hard right now (laughs) yeah absolutely um so I guess on that what sort of belief shifts did you have to go through to come to a position where you're like no I'm gonna create this mum's mindset breathwork you know community and I can be the leader or a sort of um, a figurehead in this because of my you know what sort of things maybe I know we spoke about some things that were holding you back or, or whatnot but I'd love you to share maybe one or two of those that you had to shift to then move Mm. through and be like, yep, I'm doing this. Mm. I think the first one that just comes to my head, just to do it scared. Doesn't matter if I feel like, oh, I'm not worthy enough. Why, why, why? You just do it. Because if you believe in it, it feels right in your gut. It's going to work out. You might not get it right the first one, 50 times, whatever it may be, you do the thing that is scary because you know that it feels right. Usually on the other side of that fear is where we start to really enjoy the things that we're doing, which I've proven starting the training side of things. So this is just another element that, yes, it's big and scary and new, but I know it will be okay. But it's okay for me to be scared. I'm just going to do it anyway. So just backing yourself basically. Yeah. And yeah. did you feel like having the support of, you know, the mentorship, not just me, but like the, the community or, and the, you know, we have a quite a, um, quite an intimate group in our, our scale Academy. Did you feel like that almost was a bit of a safety net to sort of give you the confidence to do it? A hundred percent. Yeah. So having those few other people that are actually in your corner as well and doing, having their own challenges and wins is always beneficial. Like it feels like you're all on the same team, even though we're in all different parts of Australia in the world coming together for that little bit of time each week. And we're like, okay, what do you, what are you going through? Yeah, you can totally do that. It's, it's having that, just that little bit of a a little bit of a tap on the back to be like, yep, you got it, where you go kind of thing. So yes, 100%. Otherwise you just get in your own head and you go round, 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 round circles and then you end up not doing anything. Mm, yeah, I see that a lot with people who sort of um, come in and out of of, of their business and, and letting their, their mindset sort of lead the path either positively or negatively. And it's huge, mm-hmm. right? Like absolutely a lot of what we speak about in the mentorship is the strategy is actual tangible things like go do this. Like what's your most important task of the week? Mm -hmm. Like let's actually execute, take action. I'm huge on that. And if we have a mindset that's going to inhibit us from, you know, getting behind the camera and talking about whatever our topic is, then we're never going to be able to take the action. So I think that starting there um, and starting with, being confident, understanding your purpose, um, and then being able to execute on that. They, they really go hand in hand. And I, I love that, um, you also feel like the scale group, uh, and just the mentorship in general, like we create lifelong friendships in that. And I think that's the coolest part because I hear you guys have, have little chats without me. And sometimes I get FOMO, but I love the fact that, you know, you're genuinely there supporting each other. Um, not just in the the hour or whatever a week that we spend with each other, but throughout the entire process. Hmm. And I feel like that's really hard to connect with people that are on similar paths. Like it's only the people that are going to invest their time and their money in something like this that you will meet because there's so many other people trying to do the same thing or saying they want to do that, but not actually putting the work in or backing themselves and showing up every week and doing those tasks. So it's a really good way to find those gems of people that you can relate to really well. Absolutely. I think mentorship programs and and other like-minded people who like you said don't just talk the talk but actually walk the walk and show up when shit's hard are, are very um few and far between and when you do find your your tribe of people you have to make sure that you hold them tight and make sure that you support them just as much as they support you it's so true it's so true oh um so i would love to know what going through the last two years of business mentoring Mm -hmm. with me, with, with the groups, 
has maybe taught you or some of the the biggest lessons along the way Mm, definitely I think it really like as we've talked about once you know it seems straightforward but before you know it it doesn't just sheer discipline and accountability showing up and doing the things and being really specific like you said before about what you're going to do you you saying oh I want to grow my business to Uh, double capacity or whatever if you don't set a timeline if you don't figure out how the steps are going to backtrack to get you there it's really vague it's like someone saying I want to lose weight and then losing half a kilo and be like yeah I've I've done that that's not what anyone wants to really do so I think breaking down and being really particular about what things are going to move the needle for me so you can waste a lot of time doing things and being busy but not actually make any headway so as we talked about a specific task that we were going to be focusing on and ticking off and getting that tick in that column just gives you a vote for that person saying I said I'm going to do this I did this tick it off move on to the next and you just keep building up same as reps in the gym so definitely that was one of the biggest ones for me anything else that you maybe like something that you uh ended up taking action on and and realized after the fact or um any sort of golden nuggets I think for me personally it was just believing in myself and setting boundaries and actually following through with them. Before I was, before starting the mentorship, I was a guilty people pleaser and I would bend over backwards, I'd give you the clothes on my back and then I'd be like, oh, well, this sucks for me now. So making sure that I set my own boundaries so that I could be happy and feel like I was providing a service and that it wasn't eating into any other time, I think was a really big one for me. So it's not that I'm trying to be rude or saying I don't have any more capacity. It is, that is my boundary around me. So you know where I am. I know where you are and everyone can work happily. And I don't want, didn't want to build up any resentment of trying to do extra hours and then getting to the stage where my kids are teenagers and be like, "Uh oh, I worked way too much when they were little. Now they don't really want to hang out with me now they're older. So I think that was a really big one for me that you guys have helped me a lot and I'm still getting better at it as I get older. But the more that I live this crazy life of running your own business and trying to really enjoy it, the more it solidifies. That's awesome. I think boundary setting is huge, right? And people pleasing because I think that oftentimes I think that the intent behind people pleasing is to be kind and generous and what it eventuates into is you bending over backwards, doing things that you wouldn't normally do or don't align with what you want in life to help someone else. So like you said, taking the clothes off your back and then being in the freezing cold, right? Like you can you know, maybe, maybe make some more clothes or buy some clothes or something and everyone can, everyone can benefit from it. I think that, um, people pleasing is really, um, not having that confidence to set your own boundaries and recognize that, you know, it's, it's really a a form of, of self-care or a form of, um, self-respect to have those boundaries because we all have them. And if you're going to respond to every single client at wee hours of the morning, um, because maybe they live in a different country like it's it's really not serving you or them because they're not learning boundaries either and then it's going to flow into their clients and and what they do with their friends and family so um I love that you touched on on people pleasing and boundary setting because I think it's so important even if it's things like, you know, I'm committing to not work on Mm -hmm. Wednesday nights because I want to hang out with my partner or whatever it is. I think having those things in place so that we don't lose sight of the fact that we're building a business so that we can have freedom and do what we want, not have the business run us um, and have the business work for us, not us work for the business and start thinking like business owners and not, um, you know, running the hamster wheel, but just on our own dime and working 5 a.m. till 9 p.m. for yourself instead of nine to five for someone else, right? 
Exactly. And when you are when you do get busy, sometimes you lose sight of that. So having a group of people where you are constantly trying to streamline, make the most efficient way to do things so you can get your time back, you do start to get more time back when you apply what you've learned. So scaling, having your VAs, automating your systems, all of those things give you time back. So you can choose how to then reinvest or what else you're going to start which is what we want to do we don't want to be brown and dying we want to be green and growing and trying to (laughs) live our best life as cliche as it sounds (laughs) I love that and you've touched on the 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 VAs or swift assist Mm. that you use um so maybe we we dive into that for for a hot minute in terms of you know you're at capacity and so you go oh I you know I still want to service more people why did you decide to get a, a virtual support um, for your business and sort of financially, why did that make sense for you? It took me probably longer. I'm sure you hear this a lot. It took me longer than it should have because I thought it's just me in my business. Surely I'm not fancy enough that I need someone assisting me like virtually to do all this paperwork and then you realize god damn this stuff takes a long time and it doesn't light me up I don't like entering things into spreadsheets I'm sure some people they do they do but it's not it's not my passion so when I it's like one of those things once I did it I was like oh my god this is amazing why did it take me so long to (laughs) actually start doing it and once again, it started at a small capacity. I was only doing having a few hours a week where I had my Swift assistant and now that's doubled. So once again, that takes more time off me entering, doing the things that are lower on my light me up kind of scale and gives me a little bit more mental capacity to go, okay, what's next? Where, what am I missing? Like, are we getting enough feedback from clients? Are we, whatever it may be. So it just gives you that really, really, uh, I guess, whirlwind brain where you're just trying to do the best you can to kind of let it settle a little bit. And you can go, yes, I trust this person to check that everyone's paid me. And if someone hasn't, then they will let me know and we'll action it. Those kind of things that take up mental capacity that you don't need to have in this brain. It just, it needs to be in a brain, but it doesn't have to be in your brain. If that makes sense. <laughs> Absolutely. Preaching yeah. to the choir, Lan. I yeah. also, I, I love because, you know, a lot of the times it can be a, a time thing or a money thing where you're like, okay, well, if I earn, let's say a hundred dollars an hour and mm. my Swift assistant's like a quarter of that, um, then you know, I only need one more client and I can have four hours of my time back. That's often the approach that, um, you know, makes most sense. But what isn't spoken about that I love that you've mentioned is the mental capacity. And sometimes you just need, instead of doing your bloody bank reconciling on a, on a Thursday night till 10 PM, it's just the mental capacity that we don't have for everything. And so to be able to have some of those mundane tasks that don't light us up removed to be able to create space. I love that. Create space to think about new things, to go, I do want to create a, you know, an online mindset mums course or whatever it is for, for you. I love that, that that's one of the things that is important to you that you've mentioned in terms of how your Swift assistant helps you not just get time back, but Mm. create opportunities, right? And allow Mm. you the ability to think bigger because sometimes you get so bogged down in all just the doing that you don't have that space to go, what can I create? What do I want to do and, and give you that? And I think that's probably more important because if we can create opportunities and we have that mental capacity to to do that and really move towards the things that we love and stop letting those things that are slowly chipping away and eating at us, hold us back. I think that is, that is true entrepreneurship, business ownership. That's not side hustling anymore. (laughs) Yeah. It's pretty amazing. It's all those energy loops. So if you've, if you've got a message Sally back and you've still got to change this on someone's program, you've got to do this. That's all little bits that's taking up space. So if they are, noted down just like when you journal if it's out of your brain an abstract onto something tangible in a sheet where you can both see it gets done so yeah it's 
it's definitely given me more energy physically because I'm not trapped in front of a computer screen as much, um, as well as mentally, as we saw, or creatively. So you can actually see past the forest and try and figure out which mount, what's the next mountain that we want to try and work towards. Mm, that's so cool. Um, not going to take up too much more of your time. I'd love to ask a couple more questions. Firstly, why did you, uh, what made you take action on uh, the mentorship knowing, you know, Mm -hmm. it's a 12 month process. It's not a flash in the pan, quick fix kind of vibe. Um, Mm -hmm. Why, why do that instead of something that maybe was a little bit quicker and potentially more intense? Mm -hmm. Uh, What was the long-term benefit for you? I think for me and how I run my business and how I see my life, I always talk about Team Turtle and taking things bit by bit and progressive overlay. Just like in the gym, you can't just go from lifting two kilo dumbbells to 20 kilo dumbbells in a week. So if I was going to do this, I was going to do it right. And I knew that it wasn't going to happen really quickly like any of the other things that seemed to fall apart very quickly. It was going to have to be a slow burn. So as I said, I already knew you and I trusted what you, uh, you'd you proven because I could see it where your business was and where it had got to. So I didn't have any doubt in that. Yes, it was scary because it was something I hadn't done before. And yes, like it was a, fin- a substantial financial like input to get the value. So, but 100% worth it, 100% worth it. I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't done the business mentorships. Simple as that. There's no There's no other way around it. Mm. that warms my heart I love hearing that thank you (laughs) I'm sure you hear it lots too (laughs) (laughs) oh the more the merrier (laughs) yeah um all righty so we've talked a lot today about um the mindset how we some of the actual strategy behind making it a business not a side hustle where do we invest um Mm -hmm. If you were to give one piece of actionable take-home advice for Mm -hmm. maybe someone who is running their own business, who hasn't had a mentor before, um, who's maybe on the fence about mentorship or or wants to, you know, take that next step, but maybe something's holding them back, what would you, what would you say to them or what would the actionable item be that you would Mm -hmm. recommend? I think... Once again, although it may seem scary and you feel unsure, if deep down in your gut you can see a very big gap between where you want to be in a year, a couple of years' time and where you are now and you need someone to fill that gap to bridge you over, mentorships are what allows you to learn quicker, apply quicker, fail faster, get back up and keep trying. You can do it, but it's going to take you a hell of a lot longer than if you find someone who has done it before and has done it successfully. So it's just being okay that that feels a little bit scary and investing in yourself because then you are going to be able to provide more value, more efficiency to everything that you do. That's awesome. I love that. And in whatever capacity you can, right? Like not everyone has, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to just drop on, on mentoring. And that's totally fine. And, you know, hopefully people have payment plans and things like that, but invest in you in whatever capacity you can. It could be listening to more podcasts. It could be, you know, reading more books. It could be going and networking and spending time if you don't have money um, to do these things and making sure that you are um, surrounding yourself with the people and getting in the rooms of people who are going to grow and expand your mind and your business and and the things that you want to do in life. So mm. I love that. I think we're going to leave it there. Uh, where can people find you, Lan? Because if they're a mum who's struggling with mindset, my God, if they haven't reached out <laughs> to you already and found you on on socials where (laughs) where are they going (laughs) so just jump on instagram and have a little bit of a look for with purpose health and fitness you'll see all the fun stuff that we're getting up to and how um we're changing everyone's life to make sure that they feel empowered they can move their body and they're becoming really resilient up here because it translates everywhere so that's where you'll find me jump on instagram um and have a bit of a look Beautiful. I love that. And absolutely, please do reach out to Lan if you are interested in um, some more of the mindset or the breath work stuff. And um, especially if you are a struggling mom, um, because I have 
seen the work that Lan puts in and she's doing some great stuff. And I love that you're failing fast and failing forward and still able to stand there and say, Hey, I'm not perfect either, but I'm here to help you. And, and we're, you know, going to build this epic community because, you know, recovery training and, and mindset are all really important. That's so true. <laughs> Beautiful. All righty. Until next time, Lan, thank you so much. Thanks Jen. see ya. Bye. Did you find something valuable in this episode? If so, I'd like to ask a tiny favor. If you have 30 seconds now, I'd love you to follow or share the podcast. That way we can continue to bring you more real, raw and uncensored stories from industry leaders. We also love hearing from you and what you loved about every episode. The best way to reach out is to DM me personally on Instagram at Swift Coaches Academy. Until next time and in whatever you do, move swiftly.